we've been in existence now for about 18 months. Um, so we're, we're a young lab. Up until um, 18 months ago, there was no research lab here in Africa. In fact, there was no commercial research lab in the continent of Africa at all. We believe, and this is a fundamental belief, that there is one untapped natural resource in Africa, and that's data. Now, what are we going to do with the data? Through Project Lucy, we're providing a platform that allows governments, enterprises, and citizens to ingest their data. And Project Lucy is underpinned by a powerful technology that is called Watson, whose primary role and primary function is cognitive capabilities. Now, based on that platform and based on the way that we analyze the data, we can open it up to an ecosystem of entrepreneurs that you have here in Africa. That's the broad framework of Project Lucy, ingesting data, analyzing data, and create, making it available for the larger ecosystem within Africa to deliver new ways of services. One of the first um, um, projects that we worked on and one of the first tangible outcomes from this lab is around the area of transportation. I mean, urbanization um, is, is growing rapidly across uh, most of the African cities. And the most obvious tangible expression of urbanization, of the impact of urbanization, is traffic. When we first started, we, we were like everyone else, which is, you know, can we address this traffic solution by providing um, an, an analysis or a solution that allows you to get from point A to point B. But once we deployed it, we realized, and this is the value of research, that there's got to be more here in Africa. So that the challenge and the opportunity is not simple navigation. Why? Because most of the cities in Africa have a finite road network. So when there is a gridlock, there is a gridlock. There, there aren't so many options. So the, the new challenge and opportunity is, can I get data and create a new model, an algorithm, that allows me to see the pattern of traffic? Because there are some times that it eases. So it helps me, therefore, to plan when to leave. And we're putting all of this together right now in a new solution that will be coming out this year. If we are truly going to be sustainable, we have to invest in the next generation that will take over and ensure that this lab continues in its mission to address Africa's grand challenges. And we've started to execute on this initiative of human, of, on human capacity development. We have a relationship with uh, Carnegie Mellon University, the Rwanda campus. Uh, for the last two years now, we bring master students in here. And it's a fully paid internship. Uh, we are also bringing um, international students of African descent from the United States, from Great Britain, um, from all around the world through our program that we call Leading to Africa. In total, this year, across not just in this lab, but across all of IBM, I think the number is about 300, either immediate Africans or Africans in the diaspora. And, and our goal simply is train them and let them come back and be part of this massive wind of change that is going on in Africa and be enablers to the transformation. Um, currently working on education, so trying to understand how to empower teachers um, given some of the constraints that we have in the continent such as um, very large classroom sizes. So how can you begin to empower teachers to be able to provide the best level of instruction they can for students, um, regardless of how big their classrooms are. I went, um, I went to school in the US, so following high school here in Kenya, I got a scholarship to attend um, Xavier University in Cincinnati, Ohio. And then following that, I applied for the PhD program at Purdue, where I studied chemistry. And then when I graduated from my PhD program, then I decided to move back to Kenya. It's challenging because research is also creation of new knowledge, right? So I think having a PhD teaches you that, to be able to look um, at, an, at a problem that you've never looked at before, have a framework for how to think through it, but also be able to now apply that framework to this new problem while still thinking about what the proper questions or the appropriate questions are to ask in this, in this field. But I think we're yet to get to a place um, like the US where academia is 
not viewed in a box, but it's viewed as very, very closely linked to, to the industry, very, very closely linked to creating solutions that are where there's sort of a, a pathway or avenue for those solutions to now become solutions to real life problems. Um, you know, the example of just the presence of um, IBM Research Africa in the continent, I think, you know, it's not even just opti optimism. We have, we have a good reason, we have evidence for why we should be optimistic um, to have a group of people who are extremely passionate, who um, have the resources, the ability, and the desire to be able to create solutions that are going to impact people, people's lives here in the continent. I think that's reason to be optimistic. And I'm sure there's many, many more people out there um, who are you know, of African descent or in the diaspora or people that are just passionate about Africa who are looking at this as a positive sign for them to begin to um, invest more in, in the continent. So I am extremely optimistic. I think the future is, is bright.